We're on the streets of Munich, an electric car made in China. A city that straddles the traditional and the modern. China's new EV manufacturers are making their way into the European market. I'm in Munich, Germany's biggest car city, to find out what the Germans think of China's EV offensive. For some, the car is a symbol of human intelligence and technological progress. My biggest dream as a kid was to be involved with cars made in China. And just when I'd almost lost hope, in 2016, a good friend from Shanghai sent me a product launch video from a company called NIO. In Chinese, NIO means future. My friend excitedly told me, the future has begun for us. In the next years, I could see my childhood dreams coming true more and more. Besides Neo, brands like Li Xiang, Xpeng, BYD, Geely, and Dongfeng also appeared. And now they're in Munich, set to conquer the European market. Reason enough for me to go directly to the streets of Munich to find out what Germans think of the Xpengs, BYDs, and Links that are now popping up more and more often on the streets of this tradition-rich city. A Chinese car, I would say. Do you know that, or just guess it? I'm guessing. Because? Because a lot of good cars come from there. Where do you think this car is from? It looks like a BMW from the side, but from the way you're asking, it probably isn't. What's your hunch? It could be from Bavaria. Where do you think this car is from? Uh, I'd say China, because most high-end cars are from China. And they're good quality. A lot of Chinese makers weren't so high quality at first. I'm surprised how well informed the people on the streets are. In the past, people in Germany thought of made in China as this, this, or this. Now made in China looks like this. Among the Chinese car makers now gaining a foothold in Europe, BYD is the strongest competitor. With its slogan, Build Your Dreams, BYD used to be synonymous with poor quality in China. I have to say, this is completely different from the BYD cars I used to drive. It's almost on a par with German mid-range and luxury cars, really surprising. And German automotive experts have taken note of this. The Chinese manufacturer will have a big market share uh, in the future if they learn uh, to adapt their models to the German customer uh, expectations. The Chinese manufacturer have to learn a bit German, and it is quite important for the Chinese manufacturers to have a European footprint also in the development phase. And uh, Munich is a good spot for that. Munich, where the IAA Motor Show recently took place, is one of the leading centers of the German car industry. Now Chinese brands are making their presence felt here. Many Chinese car makers have opened their headquarters or research facilities here in Munich. Iways, for example, a car maker founded in Shanghai in 2017, has based its technical development center in Munich. And one of China's largest car makers, Great Wall, sells e-cars like the Aura in Germany and has chosen Munich for its European headquarters. In Germany, especially southern Germany, with a lot of infrastructure, is very important to the industry. So that's why we choose to get our headquarters down to Munich, where we have, on the one hand side, talent, and on the other hand side, infrastructure when it comes to suppliers, connections with our partners like BMW. And NIO, the up-and-coming Chinese startup focused entirely on electric cars, located its design and brand development center in Munich right after its founding. Since 2017, the Chinese EV manufacturer has been fine-tuning its product range in Bavaria. 
This is absolutely the right decision. We're very proud of it. First, it allows us to gather the best design talent from all over Europe here. We already have over a hundred top designers from 30 different countries at our global design headquarters in Munich. Second, all of our models currently on the market are designed in Munich. And there's another reason why Germany is so important to the Chinese in their European offensive. It has a very long and old tradition when it comes to car making and therefore it is a very complicated market for every new entry. I would say if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Germany is very important. It's a big proof uh, if you can make it here that you could make it in other markets. The Chinese rely not only on top products but also innovative marketing. Some Chinese car dealers have even opened special clubs in Munich. At the Link Club, for example, you can not only find out about products, you can also lease, buy, borrow, or help design the car. They're also trying to create a brand community. Link fans can meet up at events or just over a cup of coffee. I'm always open to new things, and I think it's good, especially for this established German market, that a little something different comes along. It looks good. It's insanely luxurious when you get in, the price is fantastic, it's great value. I mean, where can you get so much technology, so much car, so much space for this price? You have to come with a lot of understanding and a lot of respect for that German consumer. So I think, you know, when you, when you understand that and you can create a value proposition where that German consumer says, hey, that's really great from a product perspective because they know what a good product is, but also from a value proposition, then if you make it here, you can make it anywhere. Any chance you'd pick a car like this instead of a German one? No, since my parents have always driven German cars, I'd rather look at a German car first before looking at cars from other countries. It's also a question of price, of course. If this car is much cheaper than a car made in Germany, like a BMW, of course I'd consider buying one. They have products which are much cheaper, up to minus 25%. And they have better conditions, lower energy prices, less regulation. They started with BEVs much earlier in China, so there is also already some amortization on their investments, so it's also easier to come to Europe. Germany, China and the car industry, a complex topic. To get more clarity, I'm bringing in an expert. Daniel Kishert set up joint ventures in China for BMW, worked for a number of Chinese car brands and founded the startup Byton. He's just launched a company that aims to help e-mobility made in China make a breakthrough with new marketing concepts. You've already founded several companies in China. You experience setbacks, but then you get back up and start over again. What makes you believe so much in the power and potential of the Chinese e-car industry? I've witnessed the entire evolution of this industry. First, there's a very successful policy for the sector. And second, Chinese car makers have become very fast and competitive along the way. And they have strong products. Time is one decisive factor in this competition. China started systematically developing its electromobility industry 20 years ago. At that time, the government started encouraging everyone to build electric cars, whether startups or traditional car makers. The Chinese government initiated a very good industrial policy, so many battery companies and suppliers in the electric car supply chain could also thrive. Mm. In order to get e-cars off the ground, China provided government funding for the R&D of all e-mobility components. That meant an uninterrupted supply of all the raw materials needed for batteries, electric motors, and so on. That's one reason the Chinese have now overtaken the Germans in the field of e-mobility. The Politburo in Beijing has had a hand in determining the product range of Chinese car makers from the very start. 
and has also placed a great deal of emphasis on efficient and inexpensive small cars. The onslaught of Chinese electric cars in Europe is now a serious threat to the German car companies, the former top dogs of the auto industry. We're watching this closely. We have respect for the speed and quality of the work. As a German car maker, we're still very strong in all hardware components, metal and steel. But we have a hard time with software, and our supply chains don't allow us the same speed as the new players. At the end of the day, it's always about time to market, and I think that's the big edge of the Chinese players. They have a blazing fast time to market. The German car industry has long struggled to react quickly to the market, but it's far from throwing in the towel on e-cars. It's a tough competition for us, but in the end it's good because it challenges us. We have a clear strategy on how to deal with that, and now it's about who's ahead of the game. The big thing in the automotive industry is who is going to build the true Volkswagen of electric mobility. It's not there yet. What means a true Volkswagen? It means an affordable electric car, not much more expensive than a comparable gasoline car. I believe this car will first be brought to the market by Chinese companies. Yeah, and this is the true game changer. Do you like the car at first sight? It's not my kind of car. Because? I don't know if it's the kind of car we need in the future. OK, what kind of cars do you think we need in the future? Smaller cars that are spacious, that have features where you can transport things. Did you like the car? Yes, it's nice. If you were choosing a car, would you consider one like this? Yeah. Is there anything you don't like about the car? I would probably not buy such a big car. I don't need it. I need a small one in the city. My impression from talking to people in the Bavaria metropolis, here in tradition-bound Munich, people seem to be more open to the Chinese car offensive than I'd expected. There is little evidence of German fear on the streets. As a kid, my biggest dream was to somehow be involved with cars made in China. And now I'm driving an e-car from China through the streets of Munich. The last few days have felt like a dream. I've never driven so many e-cars from China on German roads. And the acceptance of the new Chinese car makers on the German market has exceeded my expectations. Surely that's partly because all the Chinese e-cars on the European market so far are high-end models. But who dominates the European market in the future depends on who's the first to offer affordable products for the masses. And Chinese automakers are also well prepared for that. After all, there are already many small electric cars on the road in China. The future of mobility is exciting. China and Germany will certainly play an important role for some time to come. And I don't think it's the last time I'll drive through Munich in a Chinese car. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below.